Hello, hi, welcome to Lola Loves Reading, and today I will be continuing our series of Le Classique, my review and commentary of various works of classical literature. And today we will be discussing Da Da Da, Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. Yes, we couldn't pass it up. This is a comfy, cozy favorite of many, including myself, and the perfect book to curl up and discuss over the holidays. I had hoped to get this episode out before Christmas, but it just didn't happen, so here we are. This copy was printed here in the U.S. in 1918, and I picked it up at a secondhand store some years ago. I always feel so excited when I pick up old copies of books at the third store. It feels like such a rush to be interacting directly with something so old. It's like finding buried treasure. So let's get into the meat and potatoes. Austenites the world over will tell you that our girl Jane Austen was an icon of social commentary during her time. And they're not wrong. Jane Austen wrote prolifically through 1787 to 1817. Such gigantic literary titles as Emma, Sense and Sensibility, Northanger Abbey, Mansfield Park, and Persuasion. Pride and Prejudice was Jane Austen's second full-fledged novel to hit the printing press in 1813. Jane had been working on the concept for the novel since at least 1796, when she was 21 years old. It is her era's version of a romantic comedy, light and fluffy, dramatic and redeeming. It is part of a developing genre at the time known as literary realism. Pride and Prejudice is arguably Jane Austen's most well-known work, and some would say that it is her most well-rounded and accessible. It has been played out on stage and film the world over. It's my personal opinion that Pride and Prejudice is timeless because there are so many elements of it that we can still relate to today. And it is also my opinion that Pride and Prejudice is so well-loved because it is a deeply personal, and carefully crafted love letter to a romance that would never fully bloom in Jane Austen's lifetime. If you haven't seen the film Becoming Jane, or even if you have, it gives us an accurate adjacent outline of the relationship between Jane Austen and her very own Mr. Darcy, Tom Lefroy. Check it out if you haven't. Grab some tissue and a carton of ice cream while you're at it. Tom Lefroy was a young barrister in waiting from a good but large and poor family. Around 1795, he began a flirtation with Jane Austen. There was an almost instant and considerable amount of attraction between the two. Back then, within the country gentry social class, Jane Austen was accustomed to. Marrying Tom Lefroy at the time they met and fell for each other was, well, basically not going to happen. Tom had no money, and because the social rules of the time dictated that Jane was expected to marry someone who could provide for her, or at the risk of falling lower on the social rung, not marry at all, the couple were eventually and inevitably forced apart by bad timing and circumstance. The subject of money and the importance thereof for the happiness of women and married people especially at that time seemed to be a reoccurring concern in Jane Austen's life. Both of her parents had come from well-respected, influential, and even wealthy families, but had come into their marriage with very little funds. Jane Austen was the youngest of six children, of which she and her sister Cassandra were the only two girls. It was well understood that if there was any money or an estate to be inherited, it would likely go to her eldest brother, James. Jane understood in no uncertain terms that she was too poor and obscure to be attractive to men from a higher social standing, and the dating pool of men considered on her level socially was smaller than the rungs above or below it. Theoretically, her chances of finding someone suitable were slim. Tom Lefroy fit cozily into her social circle, and for all intents and purposes, he was a perfect match for her. But once again, lack of money got in the way. Neither party was willing to get into a marriage that may have put them into further financial ruin, whereby in marrying, they lost the financial protection of their benefactors. For Jane, her parents, and for Tom, his wealthy uncle, of whom he was completely indebted. And so, instead of focusing her energies on the woes of the marriage market, Jane Austen decided to put pen to paper and dedicate herself to her talent for writing. Writing was not considered to be an acceptable means of making an income for a woman in Jane Austen's position. Novels were considered to be a little scandalous and frivolous sort of the modern day equivalent of trash television and novels written by women well practically unheard of luckily for us Jane seemed to not give a shit what started out as a way to entertain her family and friends became a moderate means to support herself through her later years and thus we came to have Pride and Prejudice Pride and Prejudice is full of Jane Austen's hopes that mirror the romance she could have had with Tom Lefroy the only real known romance of her entire life in Pride and Prejudice the protagonist Elizabeth Bennet no doubt in large part modeled after Jane Austen herself is full of good sense perspective and will only marry for love Love and nothing less. Mr. Darcy is the male lead, who likely encompasses a lot of Tom Lefroy's dry humor and observations. Darcy, eventually through making right all of his wrongdoings, shifts from being Elizabeth's foe to her love interest. Because Jane and Tom's real life situation was so heavily affected by neither of them having enough money to get into a marriage, Jane made sure to give Mr. Darcy's character plenty of it. That is, £10,000 a year, or the modern equivalent of $13 million. A little overkill, Jane girly, but it's K. Okay. It would seem Jane was trying to prove a point. Before the twosome came together, Jane Austen explicitly makes it a point to depict a confrontation between Mr. Darcy and Elizabeth in which 
while declaring his love for her, he laments her family's unsuitableness and lack of resources. Elizabeth fires back at Mr. Darcy, pointing out that if he were a real gentleman, he wouldn't judge her for her obnoxious family and the fact that she doesn't have a lot of money of her own. This confrontation begins the self-reflection that eventually leads them back together again. Elizabeth and Darcy fall in love with each other as they start to let down the walls that separate them emotionally and socially. He is afraid of someone taking advantage of him, and she is afraid of being with someone who doesn't truly know or accept her for who she is. In the end, Jane Austen writes her happy ending. Mr. Darcy and Elizabeth, at their large estate, Pemberley, enjoying their comfortable living together as a married couple. Jane Austen would never marry. Tom Lafoy left to finish his studies at the behest of his uncle and never returned to call on Jane, nor did they continue to write. Another offer of marriage would come Jane Austen's way from a well-intended but boring neighbor, and after only one day of accepting, Jane would rescind it. Jane Austen passed away in 1817 at the age of 41, having lived until the end on her modest financial inheritance and payments from her novels. Tom Lafroy became a prolific barrister and passed away in 1869 at the age of 93. He named his daughter Jane. Pride and Prejudice is one of the most well-loved and well-read books of our time, with over 20 million copies sold since Jane Austen's lifetime, and a continuous and dedicated fan base. I hope you all have a very merry holiday season and a happy new year. Okay, keep reading. Love you. Bye.